do you want to get neutered spayed naked oh. <laughs> let's get naked right right i got a podcast as to the as to the no 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 <laughs> Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome back to another episode of I'm Literally Screaming. Ah! Ah! Everybody's screaming, they're shouting, they're ripping off their clothes in the stadium. They're throwing their bralettes, their corsets, their lingerie, their thongs in our faces. I think a thong just landed in my eye, actually, and it really hurts. We don't want to see all of that. Or maybe we do. And maybe I like the pain of a thong hitting me in the eye. Hey guys, <laughs> I'm back. I actually had like a Red Bull and, and I'm almost like, well, I'm chugging a venti iced coffee right now. So I actually feel like the Energizer Bunny. Like I feel batshit crazy right now. So we're in for a pretty good episode. Um, I have the one, the only, the amazing Hope Schwing in the building. She is going to come on set, but of course, Every episode, we start off with Spencer Reacts, where I react to something new in the media or just worldwide, or I just give my advice on situations that people ask about online, and uh, I'm here to provide that, you know? So uh, without further ado, let's react. All right, everyone. Today, I'm reading another anonymous advice question from Reddit. Here we go. I found out my boyfriend was looking up ways to get over his ex. How should I go about this? Break up with him. I'm not, I haven't even read the Reddit thread yet, but break up with his ass. Why is he looking up reasons to get over his ex, but he's with you? That makes no sense. Um, I could understand like in the back of my mind where it's like, actually, no. Why are you in a relationship if you're not over your ex? That's weird. Get over your ex and then get into a relationship. Like, what are you doing? Um, but let me just keep reading. Other than breakup, what can I do here? Oops. Well, that's that's literally that was my first option. Um, my best friend said that he might be trying to get over her to be his best self with me. I don't think so. I'm trying to believe that because he treats me so amazingly. Um, yeah, he treats you okay, but does he treat you well enough to not look up how to get over my ex on Safari? I don't know. Um, let me just keep reading. He's a <laughs> he's a good guy overall, not just to me. Maybe he misses the familiarity, or maybe it's because they were together for so long. We haven't been dating for very long, but there's an obvious connection, and I don't think he would have asked me out if he didn't want to make things work. He even drives 45 minutes most days just to come see me for a few hours hours or even to spend the night. He buys me dinner and when I'm struggling with money, he sends me some so I don't have to worry. Girl, never mind. I take it all back. You can stay with him. Get that money, girl. Uh, uh, <laughs> so I don't have to worry. He holds me close and is affectionate. We laugh together every day. They broke up around a year ago, and I don't even know if it's possible to date someone while missing your ex. How should I go about all this? Obviously, I should confront him, but how? I need help, please. Well, first of all, um, my honest reaction is break up with him. I don't care how good he is to you. Why is he looking up ways to get over his ex? You should not be putting yourself into a relationship with a new person if you're not over the person you were once with. I feel like even in life like it's not uncommon to reminisce like I know that there are guys that I've talked to and there are days where I'm like oh my gosh like I, they just like pop in my head but they don't pop in my head long enough for me to be like how do I get over this person like I gen like she has to probably come up in his mind a few times for him to actually physically type in how do I get over my ex and then you saw it and I mean like it'd be one thing if he told you I, I well maybe he wouldn't want to tell you but like if he was like hey I'm having some issues with like this and the third and I was wondering if he'd be willing to help me then maybe but the fact that you had to find out about it behind his back is crazy to me and I mean honestly if you're about getting that money just stay with him so he can keep paying your rent I mean I don't know how much he's paying you but you said whenever you're falling short or you need money he sends it and honestly just get that money and run that's what I would do actually yeah no that's what I would do get that money and run girl I don't see a point in being with someone who isn't over their ex. This is just my advice, by the way. Like, I don't know if other people answered this Reddit thread and gave you their advice as well. Um, but for me to you, I would not stay with him. Uh, that's just how I am. And even maybe you could be like, hey, when you 
actually get over her, you'll know. Then hit me up. It can be one of those things. Or like, hey, let's just like be friends for now. Because again, you mentioned that you guys recently got together and he broke up with his girlfriend a year ago and they were a long-term relationship. In my mind, the way that relationships work, it's like if I were in a relationship for two years, it might as well take me like maybe three years to get over that person. Does that make sense? Like you have to then readjust your entire life to not having someone you've been accustomed to around. It's like it's hard. It's difficult. But I also feel like you shouldn't have to sit there. And I'm sure you probably do after seeing his search history and feel like you're a rebound. And I know that in your Reddit thread, you're like, oh, like we have a really good relationship. Yeah, you can have a good relationship, but that doesn't mean you're not the rebound. And I don't mean to say that in a bitchy or mean way, but it's the truth. Imagine you were in a relationship long term and then you broke up with that person. And then a year later, you're with somebody else. Tell me that wouldn't like you need to take yourself out of the situation and imagine if this was like one of your friends, because I know for you, it's easy to be like, oh, yeah, no, like this is OK. This is normal. But then it's like, imagine if that were your friend. Imagine if your friend came up to you and was like this guy that just got out of a long term relationship last year is now dating me. Blinks, side eye looking around the room. Does anybody anybody see that? Oh, yeah, it's a red flag. You hear that, guys? That was me sipping. Sipping on some good advice that I just gave to some random anonymous person on Reddit. But now that I'm done with that and I've gotten all of that advice off my chest, it's time we welcome someone onto the set. Um, I said who it was before, but if you don't know, it's Hope Schwing. I love this bitch. I'm really glad she's here. Get your fine ass out here, Hope. Me and Hope have the zoomies. We've both been having caffeine. Everybody scream! Ah! It's Hope! It's Hope Swing! Ah! 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 What do you think about the Reddit thread I read? Because Hope's been here the whole time. What do you think? Like, if I came to you and I was like, oh, hey, girl, I just got into a relationship with a guy who got out of a long-term relationship last year. Dump him. I I don't know. I I just, I wouldn't be able to stay in a relationship knowing that he's thinking about somebody else. One, I'm an attention whore. Mm. And two, I'm, again, like you said, I'm not going to be somebody's rebound. When you go to a Reddit thread... Um, to seek advice, no offense to anyone who's gone on Reddit for advice, but it's like, if you're going there for advice, you know, you already know, mm -hmm. like, I feel like you're just going there because you want like that validation of people being like, no, it's okay. It's no girl. You're on Reddit. Like you want, you, you went to a Reddit thread. So that should have been your first answer of like, so what great. do I do? That's not break up with him. Break up with him, girl. It's like going on to Google when I mean, like, why do I have a headache? And you find out you have like two types of cancer, yeah. a broken femur, and you're about to die in five minutes. That's it's right. It's not correct. It's yeah. not what you're supposed to be hearing. That's right. You need you need the honest to God truth. We're not going to tell you that you're dying. We're going to tell you that you need to break up with him. Mm -hmm. But hey, he is paying some bills, I suppose. So you might as well get that money up before you leave. Like, be like, oh my gosh, like, I have a car payment due in like two months, and like. I don't have the money right now and it's a thousand dollars. Like, what do I do? And then if he sends you the thousand dollars, accept that money and then be like, mm, actually, I hate to tell you this, but I want to break up with you and then leave because at least you got your money up and then you broke up with him. That's a boss bitch move. Don't get your heart broken. Mm -hmm. That felt powerful. Yeah. How was your week? How's your weekend been? It was good. Um, What did you do? This past weekend? Yeah. I went out Friday night. I got a little bit too tipsy. Okay. I did. What did you do? I, I threw down on the dance floor. Oh, and wish. it was really fun. But then I'm getting to that age where if I go out one night for drinking, I'm taking out for like a solid 48 hours. Mm. I'm hungover till like 10 p.m. the I next don't, day. I don't get hungover, but I get suicidal. And <laughs> yeah, like, the like, anxiety. I can't like, I actually realized that I really should not be drinking because I'm on Zoloft, which is like an oh antidepressant. Gosh. And yeah. I didn't know that it would like mess with my like brain the way that it does but I just cannot drink because if I do it's just and it's gotten worse because my Zoloft um like the milligrams that I have it was raised mm -hmm. um and then when I would like go out and drink I was like damn like why do I want to jump off my balcony <laughs> and nosedive into the concrete yeah and then no, I'd be like oh I was on Zoloft in college and from right up until I moved to California. Mm. Or wait, no, I was on it for like a few months while I was in California. I was on 150 milligrams because like I, I was a little bit. 
Yeah. <laughs> had some questionable mental behavior. But I was drinking, keep in mind I was in college. So I was drinking a lot while I was on the Zoloft. And I was probably drinking more than somebody who <laughs> should sure. have been when they're not even on Zoloft. And I remember I just had like these hor like horrific hangovers. And I'm just like, I wouldn't mind if I just like died. Yeah. You know? I, I, in my head, I, when whenever I would drink too much it was always just like the thought in the back of my mind it was just like why am I alive like that's literally and that's what not to like make this really a depressing episode we'll make it happy in a moment yeah. but like I literally would drink and then the next morning I'd be like what's the point of living why am I breathing I'm a speck of dust compared to the size of the universe what's one less human alive let me jump off my balcony and end it all right here right now yeah. But then I have like a ham and cheese bag up from Starbucks and I feel a little bit better. Yeah. Like it's fine. And I take a bath and mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm super dramatic. I'm so silly. Yeah, I'm, I'm silly. so silly. I'm so silly and goofy. <laughs> I didn't mean those things. No, I didn't mean it. I need to stop biting my finger. Is it bleeding? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I we have- We are vampires. Mm. Do you bite your fingers? So, I bite my fingernails, but not like my like flesh. I have to stop biting. Oh yeah, this is my boyfriend. <laughs> your flesh? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi. Luigi. Aw. Yeah. How long have you guys been together? Oh, we've been together. When did the Mario movie come out? Because that's when we met at the premiere. Mm. So I'd say a few months now. Okay. And then he got kidnapped. He is the taller of the two brothers. So he is. Kudos and, to he's, that. And, you, and he's not just good at cleaning pipes. Wow. He's a really good plumber. Let's go. Right. <laughs> uh, I had Zay. You know Zaya. Yes. I had her stay with me for from last Wednesday to yesterday. That was like, I haven't seen her in so long. Um, but that was my entire weekend. She came over. We hung out. And she's moving here. That's so exciting. But I, I told Hope all of this backstage. I'll tell all of you guys this now. Um, so Zaya came to Los Angeles looking for apartments. And she was going to get an apartment here last month. But she had surgery. She was supposed to have her surgery in August, but it got pushed to, or no, she was going to have her surgery in June, but it got pushed to August. So she wasn't able to come out to LA until this month. And then she found an apartment in my complex. So she's going to move into my complex. And then when my lease is up, she's going to transfer her lease to a two bedroom. And we're both going to sign the lease and then move in together. That's the plan hopefully. But right now we don't know. And aside from that, um, again, I am attempting to s quit smoking marijuana. Um, it's not like, it's not that I don't like doing it. It's just that it's gotten a lot and I don't want to be dependent on it. And, uh, last night, the way that I was like, OMG, I'm going to quit smoking marijuana. Uh, but I don't want to throw out any of my weed. Um, I just smoked it all. Um, so, uh, I'm okay now, but, um, yeah, that was my weekend. You're efficient. I am. Like, yeah. I'm just like, I'm money conscious. Yes. Big brain energy. Yeah. Smoke all the weed. Yeah, that's why yeah. I was like, I'm not gonna waste it all. Yeah, I want to see your tattoo really quick. This sun. Which one? Okay, yeah, this one. I've been working on a sleeve. I want to get more, but I realized there's no point in getting new tattoos in the summer when you're tanning. Not even that, but like if I'm like unintentionally tanning, just being outside in California in the summer. Do you what, tan with a healing tattoo? No. Your arms look a little tan. This is the arm that sticks out the window when I drive. Oh. This arm is actually a lot darker. Yeah, me too. I'm really <laughs> tan, actually. I don't look pasty white like Casper cool. the Ghost. That's okay. In the winter, I look like Morticia Adams. I'm like see-through. Really? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, kind of gives though. I am actually like unbelievably pale. I don't, I've never, well, it's not that I don't tan. I do. It's just that I burn first, like mm. really, really bad to the point where I feel like I should get rushed to the hospital for like mm. sun poisoning. <laughs> another one. <laughs> we have another fly guys. And I promise you if that bitch lands anywhere near me, I'm smacking the f out of it. I'm smacking the F word out of it and I'm going to smack it hard and it's going <laughs> to die. I can't stand these bugs. Anyways, scared the shit out of me. <laughs> are you in a relationship? No. How do you feel about men right now? Um, because you're like unhinged with guys, right? Yeah, yeah. I just, I am too. Like, how am I with men, or like, how am I in terms of like getting into a relationship? Like, okay, let me ask. This is this is my first question. Okay. What is the most unhinged thing you've done while talking to a guy? Um. <laughs> hmm. 
Take your time. I'm gonna. I have sip to think. I have to think. Um, like unhinged thing that I've done while talking to a guy. Okay. Well, the thing is, like, I don't really talk to a guy for a super long time. Normally, it's like if I talk to a guy for like a certain amount of time, it's more like friend ish. You yeah. know, it just like fills us out. Like at first, we're like flirting for like a week, and then after like that week, Mark. It's just like we're like friends. That's how it is with me. Yeah. So I don't even have time to really do anything that unhinged. Oh, because... see, that's where we're different. Okay. Here, you tell me yours because maybe I have. Maybe we have. I've talked about this before, but like I, some guy once sent me a picture of his pecs at the gym and I sent him a video of me rocking back and forth, sucking my thumb, <laughs> saying baby needs milky. <laughs> um, he sent me a picture of his bicep once and I asked him if I could bite it. Um, there was another guy who was like talking. See, like when I say like unhinged, I mean like. I mean, like, not in person, but more actually, maybe there was this one time where I was in person, but that was because I was at like a Super Bowl party and it was the halftime show for Rihanna. And if you didn't think I was going to get blacked out, you were dead wrong. Um, I did get blacked out and then I passed out on a couch at a restaurant and he was there, but like he wasn't paying attention to me anyway, so I didn't really care. <laughs> um, and then I ended up walking to the bathroom. I actually threw up like 20 times. Um, and then when I was leaving the bathroom, I forgot that there were stairs um, that like let out of the bathroom. So I fully just fell down a flight of stairs and then face planted into the concrete and I had a huge gash on my chin and I didn't realize how bad it was because I was so intoxicated until I got back to the table. And while I was walking back, everyone was like, oh, my God. And by everyone, I literally mean like random people were asking me if I was OK. Apparently there was like blood dripping down my chin and like down my <laughs> neck because I like actually face planted into the ground. Um, but yeah. Uh, okay. What about you? So I haven't gone to that extent. Actually, I might have. I've gotten pretty pretty drunk I've I've just probably things that I don't even know you know but I would say like over the phone I did have a guy say that he was hungry and so I photoshopped myself onto a plate right yeah so no, I did that's that good. and I go dinner served and but yeah that's really good it. and like I'm the occasional like thirsty like Facebook mom angle with like the little the cleavage the cleave you that's know that's good yeah I'm gonna start doing that I'm gonna you start should. I'm gonna start I'm gonna edit a photo of myself on a plate do it do it okay I you're gonna say you're gonna show the cleave oh well I don't really have any of that pushing together <laughs> I'm deciding still if like when I'm like 85 actually I'm not gonna do this my friend keeps saying that when she's 85 she wants to get like a botched boob job <laughs> just to like have like a really like botched titties <laughs> Sorry, I keep seeing the fly and it's creeping me out. Man. <laughs> um, but the reason I asked you about like like being unhinged with guys is because you're not in a relationship. I'm not in a relationship. What do you think? Again, this is simply because like there's no other conclusion I could come to aside from what is wrong with men? Like, why are we not in relationships? What's wrong with them? We are too hot. I don't like that answer. <laughs> I would like to blame the men. Um, I think it's because we're too hot and they're freaking weird. Yeah, honestly. Like, guys, it's just... I have not been in a serious relationship in my whole life. And I'm 25. And it's just like... I could get a boyfriend. I really could. Die! Get away! Sorry. I could get a boyfriend. But, honestly, they're like this fly flying around. Like, I want nothing to do with it. You know? Oh. Like, it's just... I'm so used to being on my own. I'm very good at being single. I'm very independent. And I, like, to some people, I may not be, like, a high-value woman or whatever because, like, my name is Hope, and sometimes the P is silent, you know? So, like, oh. that, like, may diminish me to some guys or whatever. But I don't care, you know? But I still know that I am, like, I don't know. I'm not, like, better than all men, but I feel like I'm... Better I have than my priorities, you yeah. know? Like, some of them just aren't boyfriend material. Most of them aren't boyfriend material. Also, in especially in this, like, industry, I feel like it's yeah. hard to, like, be in relationships because it's, like, the minute you're in a relation... This is what I feel, like, sucks about, like... Not sucks, but it's, like... I personally, aside from men just being men, um, I personally have, like, just reached this mindset, for myself at least, where it's, like... I am so dead set on my career and what I want to do and like the different avenues I can go down. And I've always felt that it's not that being in a relationship would hold me back. It's just that the minute I get 
Oh my God, I keep burping. Sorry, everyone. That's okay. <laughs> I just, I feel like when I get into relationships or even when I'm like talking to, not even talking, but like when I'm in a relationship or like dating someone, I immediately, it's like half my time is devoted to myself and then the other half is to them. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I guess that's okay. But the minute I'm in a relationship, it's like you get my all. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I right now, especially in this industry, need to give myself that attention and give myself everything before I go about giving a man something that he clearly does not deserve mm -hmm. right now, at least. Yeah. And also like on that, I'm giving time to myself and to like my career because being an influencer, we have so many like different career routes we can take. And that involves us investing so much time into those too. Cause like these projects that we work on and stuff, like they're not going to take off unless we like invest our time. Invest our time, yeah. And then if you have like a significant other with like a boyfriend and stuff, like they're going to, it's not even that they're like needy. It's just that I can't provide enough time to nurture them. I don't know. I just. It's not your fault. Yeah. I mean, I'm on that grind. Like I want money. I want right. to be successful. Right. I want to have my own house someday. Right. I want all the clothes in right. the world. Right. All that stuff. And it's just like this time in my life, like I just don't know if I have the time to give myself to another guy. Unless if they're okay with accepting that, you know? Yeah. You know, because. Hmm. No, I, I 100% like get it. I'll do my best, but like sometimes my best like, isn't enough for a guy. A guy. And now a quick break from the show to hear from our sponsors at ZocDoc. Finding the perfect doctor is like a dream come true. When I'm on the search for a new doctor, I ask every single person I know for a good recommendation. You know, someone who actually cares, listens to me, makes me feel super comfortable and doesn't judge my symptoms. And nothing is worse than thinking you found the perfect doctor only to find out they don't take your insurance. That experience alone is enough to make me spiral and give up. But what if I told you there was an app that makes the process of finding the perfect doctor fast, easy, and kind of fun. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones that take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. These doctors all have patient reviews from real, verified people, not bots. And I can tell the difference. The average wait time to see a doctor in person is 24 to 48 hours, and sometimes you can even score a same-day appointment. Go to ZocDoc.com slash screaming and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash screaming. ZocDoc.com slash screaming. Now, back to the show. I feel yeah. like in a, a lot of times, especially what I've noticed is like even if I'm talking to a guy. I feel like this is why a lot of things like fizzle out. It's because I, I feel like people don't understand when like you do in not even when you do influencing, but when you're like a entertainer mm -hmm. and that's something you take on full time, it takes like, it takes over. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that other jobs aren't hard. I feel like all jo jobs are difficult. Like mm -hmm. I've worked in customer service. I think that's, like first of all <laughs> yeah. hated it but it's like I I'm fortunate enough to do something I love now but that doesn't mean that it's not difficult mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean that like every day I have a schedule like I wake up I get my shit done I film I have times when I post and it's like my only day off is on Sunday and I'm always on the go 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 like mm -hmm. I am in meetings or like I want to like start something so I'm in another call or this sound the third and then it's like I have friends visiting so I'm gonna go collab with them where's my free time mm -hmm. and it's like when I do get that free time it's like three missed texts and it's then I respond and it's like that's why it fizzles out it's not because I don't want to talk to them it's more so it's like I have devoted my time solely to myself and there's nothing wrong with that but some guys don't get that some mm -hmm. guys are like I want your attention and like especially in like the beginning stages I've always felt that like that's kind of like that time where it's like you get a feel of one another and it's like when you talk back and forth and you're the most flirty because you want to see if you guys are on like the same level of like am I attracted to you the way you're attracted to me mm -hmm. and then and if I if I'm not reciprocating that not intentionally but unintentionally obviously they're going to be like oh maybe maybe it's on to the next and I'm mm -hmm. like oh shit okay and I feel like another thing too like what you're talking about when you're first talking to somebody like you guys both are responding like pretty quickly like talking like there's like that fun flirty getting to know somebody romantically in the mm -hmm. beginning after a week I've noticed it's either me or it's him that like 
fizzles out. Yeah. You know, I'd say it's very 50 50. Like, I try to make time. Like, if I see that some guy is worth it, I do try to make time to text him back. And oftentimes, I'm finding out with guys a lot is that even with my busy schedule and like me, like fitting them into my day, they're still not up to par with as much effort I'm putting in a lot yeah. of times. Like, a lot of times, some guys like, um, feel like I'm not putting in enough effort, but then a lot of times, I feel like they're not putting in enough effort too. And then you can also feel right away as like being somebody who is like an influencer and stuff like that. Um, you can like feel out right away if like a guy is just talking to you if they want some like Instagram followers. That's what I- And it's so annoying. I literally was talking to a guy like not very long. It was like maybe a week and he hit me up. I am. I immediately knew when he asked this question, he was like, oh, if you don't mind me asking, like you don't have to answer if you're uncomfortable, but what do you do for a living? I was like, you put too much effort into that question to not mm -hmm. know what I do for a living. Yep. Cause like typically like any other person would be like, oh, by the way, what do you, like if I were like, oh, I'm working, they'd be like, oh, what are you working on? What do you do? Yeah. But he put in that effort to be like, oh, if don't, I don't want to make you uncomfortable in this sound that the you know and then I didn't respond I just like sent him a photo of me being like this and then not even a day later he was like OMG you're an influencer why didn't you say anything yeah bitch because I didn't have to say anything you already knew yeah. it's just like I'm not gonna play this game of like cat and mouse of like you chase like I'm not doing that like mm -hmm. if you know just say it like I've said it time and time again I would much rather talk to somebody who knows what I do for a living and then be like hey I know you from social media but I don't want to get to know Spence Wall. I want to get to know Spencer I want to mm -hmm. know you yeah you know and it's like when guys tiptoe around the subject when I know that they know it's so annoying and it's so it is so obvious too. Like I'm talking to every single guy I have stopped talking to simply because you guys are like, oh, like I didn't know you did social media. Bitch, yes, you did. Like you literally did. You're like, you're just now that we're talking, you finally found out. Like also that's why I add guys on Snap because it's like, I'm not giving out my number one and two on Snap, I'm verified. So it's like, oh, you're verified on Snap. So that gives you like that. That's my thing. It's like, even if a guy were like, oh, why are you verified on Snap? I would have no problem being like, oh, yeah. because I work in social media. But the minute you're like, what do you do for a living? You don't mind me asking. And I don't really know what you do, but I'm just a bitch. Shut the hell up. Like, <laughs> like you know what I do. like compensating, like not knowing. Yes. And have you had guys, like once they find out that you're an influencer, there's like, oh, we should collab. Like when you like have talked to them on a dating app first, has any guy ever asked you that? Because I've had guys be like, we should collab. And I'm like, mm. what? Like, it's just so weird. Like, I don't know how they think that that's like a, like, oh, that'll get her. No. That'll get her heart going. Mm -mm. That'll give her butterflies and all that. It's like, want to collab? It's like, I've never had Absolutely that. not. I do not want to collab. I want to block you. <laughs> no, literally. Yeah. I want to block you. Uh, and it's like, if we're, if we were in like a relationship and after some time, like, yeah, we can make a video together and all that stuff, but I'm not going to be like, him being like, oh, don't forget to tag me. Like that's, that kind of thing. I'd be like, whoa. I once <laughs> like, had a guy, the, the sorry to cut you off. Oh, but you're good. I once had a guy, the one I went to the Super Bowl thing with, the one where I like blacked out, fell down a flight of stairs after going to the bathroom and then had like a gash in my chin. He was like posting shit on a story and just like tagging me. And like, he knew what I did for a living. And this is my issue. It's like, Maybe there's always that like maybe he didn't know, but like in my head, it's like you know how people are. Mm -hmm. You know that if people see that you're out and about with someone from social media, they're going to be like, oh, what? And mm -hmm. they know you're gay. They know I'm gay. So it's like, oh, why are you with him? And it's not like, oh, you guys are friends. Like, no, it's never that. It's never, ever, ever that. And it's like him doing that was like my immediate like got to go by. Like, I can't like I'm not going to like I'm not going to put myself through that shit. I don't have the time, one, for a guy to pretend like he doesn't know who I am when it's either clear that he does or doesn't. And two, I don't have time for guys to just like go about doing shit. That's kind of like sneaky, sly, and like maybe it's not to them, but like read the room, bitch. Yeah. Like read the room. Yeah. That's how I feel. It's like also if they're like adding you or tagging you, that means they've seen your they've account. They've seen my account. It would be nice where I could just take a picture with a guy friend and post it somewhere mm -hmm. and people not assuming that like we're together and everything. And that's like another reason why I have had such issues with trying to 
make a relationship work too is because the second that I post them and then I stop posting them, they're gonna be like, they broke up. And then like people are going to come after them or people are going to come after me and they're gonna make up stories and make up lies. And so I don't know. Cause like, you know, like once you are like an influencer and like you have followers and all that stuff, like once you get into a relationship, it's going to be public, whether you want it to be or not. Cause people are going to find out, you know, people are like actually crazy. They're nuts. They're going to find out when I, the yada years ago, um, I didn't post with that person I was mm -hmm. with. Um, and people found out who he was within like the drop of a dime. Like people found out who he was so quickly. And then the minute we did break up, but it was like the minute I started taking down all of our posts, it became like the scandal of the century. Mm -hmm. Like everything was like Spence one X break up and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, holy shit. And then it's like, even when you're in social media, not to like detour down this path, but it was so like, I didn't even have time to like process the breakup before people were like, what happened? What happened? And then when you answer, people then don't like the answer. People yeah. don't, people don't like the answer because it's like, oh, you should have taken the time to heal before you said anything. But you guys were literally <laughs> filling my, you know what I mean? It's like, there's no winning. And that's what sucks to being in a relationship online. It's like, there is, it's a lose, lose, like regardless. And I feel like especially because we work in social media and our job is to like be open and like have the public having like some sort of insight on our lives um, because of that, it's just always been difficult to to actually commit to a relationship because it's like I I feel like ever since social media, like I have this like extra wall up mm -hmm. and I don't want to like I can't open up. I can't open up to guys or like let them in. And it's like so emo, like, no, it's not, you know, but I just seriously can't, I have extremely bad trust issues. That's it's in this industry. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like we have every right to be like, um, I don't want to tell you certain things unless I actually get to know you mm -hmm. because like rest assured, literally at any moment you can be talking to a guy and for all you know he's recording on the other line on his laptop and then all of a sudden what happens it's like hope swing audio leaked of her saying this that, and the third mm -hmm. and it's not even like i would say anything bad i would just be afraid of it's them just like a violation of privacy yeah i've had guys where I, like we were hanging out or whatever and like they've recorded me and one guy i actually like got so infuriated like I didn't beat him up, but in my brain I did. I wish I would have beat him up. I should have beat that person up. But yeah. it's just because there have been so many guys that have, like, taken advantage of the fact that they could, like, get something out of me or just say, like, I don't really get why they're so quick to grab on to whatever influencers have because there are so many influencers. Like, being an influencer in 2023 is not, like, the biggest deal in the world. Like, there's so many influencers. Like, it's not like we're – a celebrity or anything like we just got some like internet clout at the end of the day like we're just like i i don't know does that no, make sense i get where you're coming i feel like bat like when youtube first started and it was like smosh or like yeah joey graceffa or tyler oakley or like big named youtubers or even when musically was a thing mm -hmm. because it wasn't like normal to like idolize online personas fully i mean like yeah people had like popular tumblr and like myspace pages yeah. but this was like people posting and editing and being funny and like putting themselves online and being open that wasn't like a thing really like i mean mm -hmm. with celebrities the the most you would get out of them is like shit and in interviews mm -hmm. whereas like these people are now going online recording themselves spilling their hearts out to you and like telling you about their lives and giving you literally an open door invitation to seeing into like what goes on in their day to day. Mm -hmm. and that's and not new anymore. It's not new. Like yeah. it's normal. Like yeah. how many times do you see people being like, get ready with me or like, this is what I did today or like what I eat in a day and this and the third. It's like, everybody is so, I think it's because it's everybody normal. wants, like a lot of people want to be an influencer. And I yeah. think that's maybe like why, like maybe they're not like these guys like aren't hooked on to the fact that they're talking to an influencer. It's just maybe they think that they can become one. Yes. Too. Like through like piggybacking off of an Someone influencer. Else. And it's just like, that's just not how it works. Because again, it's so saturated in like the industry, in this industry. Whereas like, yeah, you get like a few, like you had like Charlie D'Amelio and like now Alex Earl, like those just blew up like out of nowhere. Yeah. You know, but like that's not 
they didn't like piggyback off of anybody. You know what I mean? They just yeah. like randomly happened. Yeah. And that's just not how. I, yeah. It's like, so hard to like verbalize. No, like vocalize we, we've it, you know? built our platforms being organic. Yes. Like we've gotten our platforms by being ourselves and like we got lucky. Mm -hmm. There's like no other word for it. We got lucky. Yeah. And guaranteed if a guy wanted to like piggyback off of us, unfortunately, sorry, my love, if we break up, something happens, you know, what's going. you're going to be, maybe you will be like hot shit for five minutes, but it's not going to be like a career. Uh, yeah. Unless if they're like super creative and unless like, they've already built up yeah. a, a presence online on their own. Like, I feel like there's a difference between like dating an influencer as an influencer and then wanting to become an influencer. So I'm going to date an influencer. Yeah. Like dating into it. Yeah. Like you know? they're there. You can't really, I mean, I know that there are couples that like they started off as like couple accounts online, but yeah. it's like even then, like these couples, they split up. They have their own accounts now that like this down the third. But I feel like it's a lot like it's not going to just you dating someone who's an influencer isn't going to make you. It's not your golden ticket. Yeah. You know. So, guys, now that me and Hope had our amazing conversation on men and dating and just all the shit that can go wrong and right in relationships, we're actually going to play a game called Love or Lift. And for all my listeners out there who aren't watching this on the Past Your Bedtime YouTube channel, I'm currently holding a black bowl with strips of paper. And on those strips of paper are celebrity names written on them, specifically male celebrities. And me and Hope are now going to rapidly pull names out of here. Um, we don't know who we're going to get. And then we're going to say, hey, would I go on a date with them? Or or would I rather go to the gym? Get it? Love or lift? Love them, go on a date or lift at the gym. Um, Hope, I'm going to let you go okay. first. Dominic Fike, uh, lift. Yeah. Um, Adam Sandler, love. I'm going on a date with yeah, him. I, I would love, love to. Him. Even if to it's not for me. like love, he's married and has kids, but I would just go on a date with Drake, him. Drake, love or lift? Love because he'd be a great lover. He's such a soft little munchkin. Drake? Yeah. <laughs> Corbin Blue. Oh my God, go on a date. I love Corbin Blue. Corbin Blue was in um, um, High, High School, School Musical, Musical and also um, Gotta Push It. No, that's um, Jump In. Jump In. You know the one with Kiki Palmer? I don't. They play Jump Rope. It's Double Dutch. I don't know. I'm what so is sorry. wrong with you? I don't know. Ross Lynch. Love. Mm. Sorry, I had a sip of my iced coffee. I took shots with Ross Lynch. Me like, too. Party. Really? He was at the same party. <gasps> we were. At was the it same... at the same party? Yes. And then you went to the after party and I didn't go. That's right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. He showed up and I literally walked up to him. Every actually, not to go off on a tangent, but every single time I see Ross Lynch at a party, I'm like, Ross, what are you doing here? I know. I'm like, I like fangirl every single time. Um, one time I saw him and I laughed because I like bet all my friends <laughs> that he would be at a party, and he was like, Why are you laughing at me? And I was like, sorry, I just bet all my friends you would be here and you're actually here. Um, sorry. Ross Lynch, I love you. Get Ross. Lynch on the show I would oh, get Ross Lynch on here now and invite me back <laughs> um Elon Musk I would only go on a date with him because I'm trying to get my money up yeah but like if we're going for like personality and looks bitch I'd rather lift maybe he'll like reward you instead of a bouquet of flowers he'll give you like a model a three yes a even even joyga that's um, victorious it's back from victoria oh love oh we might look like siblings. Love. That's okay. <laughs> um, Joshua Bassett. I'm going to go lift. No, I'm kidding. I actually once saw Joshua Bassett at a party and um, I was also like, like literally okay. why I'm, I'm pulling out names and I'm like, oh, I know this person. I saw Joshua Bassett at a party and um, when I saw him, I basically was like, hey, I'm like really sorry uh, for saying everything. I'm not because when him and like the whole Olivia Rodrigo thing and I felt really bad when I saw him and I was like, oh, I was just kidding. Like, I hope you know that. And he was like, no, I know it was a joke. I laughed. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I sent it to my friends and I was like, OK, work. Silly. You made it in the group chat. Austin Butler. Um, Lift. MGK left. Mm, wow. Sorry, MGK is just not my type. Oh, that's okay. Here. Paul Wesley. Who is that? Paul Wesley from the Vampire Diaries. We have the same birthday, July 23rd. And he was also born in New Jersey and he's from New Jersey. And he's really? I really he's don't know. stuck Should in the Vampire one? Diaries. No, um, you're gonna know who he is because I'm gonna have Laura show you a photo of him. Okay. I haven't seen the Vampire Diaries. 
Pow! Oh, love! He's so <laughs> amazing! Yeah, he's, he's yummy, I love yummy, yummy. him! He can suck my blood. Was he a vampire? <laughs> yes! Ah. Sorry. Um, Zane, I'm assuming Zane from One Direction. Um, like, I feel like he'd be my gym crush. Like, I wouldn't go on a date with him, but I would, like, want to look at him at the gym, so. He's so cute. He's sexy. Yeah, but, like, mm -hmm. he's, like, married and, like, has a kid. And then, like, there's that whole controversy about him. And I, you know what? F*** it. I'm going to love Zane. I'm going to write it, too. Pillow talk. All right. <laughs> DJ Khaled. <laughs> DJ Khaled. I don't know if um, you can take it. I know you want to see me naked, naked, naked. 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 Uh, this is just a date, right? Yeah. I'll love him. I want to go on a date with DJ Khaled. James Corden. Oh, like carpool karaoke, right? Oh, he does carpool karaoke. Love. Yeah. I would like love to sing karaoke fun. with him. Okay. Whoop. Robert Pattinson, Lift. Uh, excuse me, bitch. <laughs> excuse you. <laughs> Post Malone. Oh, love. Mm -hmm. I would love to. I would love. I would love. love. Uh, I went to his concert for New Year's one year and he threw a Bud Light can into the crowd and it hit me in the head and there was a little bit of beer left in it and it was my second baptism. <laughs> <laughs> it was incredible. Austin Mahone. Mm, love. Yeah. I know yeah. Right. Jake Paul. I'm not even going to finish the name. I'm not even going to finish the name. Hell to the no. Hell. Add to the, add to the no, no, no. All my ladies. All my ladies. I'm not ever going on a date with Jake Paul. Sorry, Logan. May Actually, Logan, maybe. Yeah. Um, wait. Logan has the prime drinks, right? Yeah. I would love him. Oh, I love the prime drinks. Uh, this isn't sponsored, but literally they hit me up in my DMs all the time. And they're like, you want some prime? And I'm like, hell yeah, I do. I would suck dick for prime. I love Prime. <laughs> I would suck dick covered in Prime. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hold up. Oh, this is not sponsored. Ooh, I'm turning red. Cole Sprouse. Um, Lift. Jacob Alordi. Which one is that again? Euphoria Man. What? Nate Euphoria. Ah! Him. That's what I do. <laughs> I would love him. Sorry, we're gonna have to bleep that out, huh? <laughs> I would love him. I would love him. I would love him, and he could love me too. In every crevice there is to love. Crevice. Oh my god. Uh, I don't know why pretty. I didn't get that right away. Oh, okay. and his accent? He's Australian. Really? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Dylan Sprouse. I got. Cole Sprouse, Cole Sprouse last time and Dylan Sprouse. Sprouse from there. <laughs> I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> Love Dylan Sprouse. Josh Hutcherson. Um, literally, jump on it. Let's do it. Ride it. That phone. Yeah, no love. Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Fallon. Um, I would love him because that'd be a fun date. Okay, wait. You pull yours. I have mine. And then let's read them at the same time. Okay. Three, okay. Two, one. Timothy Chalamet. Taylor Lautner. Love. Love. Both. Oh, my God. Let's have a foursome. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Wait. I didn't mean that. Oh. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Well, everyone, now that we've finished the game and we've gone a little feral yeah, and we've and had our, yeah, hot, bothered. Rabid. Do you want to get neutered, spayed? Naked. Oh, <laughs> let's get naked. What would you do if I said that and then a disco ball fell from the ceiling and a whole bunch of lights came out and 10 lice? naked, no lights. Oh, that too. Naked <laughs> lice and men came out and the lights were like human sized and they were naked and they were walking like this. And then there were men that were butt ass naked that came out and they were like, ooh. And then they started giving us slap dances and we were like, oh my God, what is happening? And then I'm like, OMG, you know how in iCarly they have that button that's like random dancing. <laughs> I have a cool button. And that's random naked men. And whenever I hit it, random naked men come out of every corner of the room and they start dancing on us. That's not going to happen. But what if it did? That would be really fun. And but it sounds expensive. Probably. Yeah. Damn. Next well, time. Next time. Next time. 
<laughs> well, before we end the show and before you go, do you want to tell everyone any upcoming projects you're working on? If you're allowed to talk about them, your social um, media platforms, where people can find you. I've been working on my lifestyle and fitness YouTube channel. I deleted my old channel mm. and I started over. That's Hope Schwing. My Instagram is hope.schwing. My TikTok is hope underscore schwing. And my Snapchat is hope schwing. <laughs> they're all different. Well, they're, they're like the I same. I ain't got that like domain the... monopoly yet, but yeah, you can find me there. Um, any projects? I, I don't think I have like anything that I can really talk about yet. Got it. But there is stuff coming. I want to do kickboxing. I want to f me jump. Oh, I've always wanted to try I'm about to say that? Yeah. Okay. F bitch up. We all want a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, but which one can turn you into Squirtle? Move, <laughs> move your tongue into a circle. The right spot is universal. Just don't bite or you'll get out the verbal, not to mention Donatella Purple. Well, guys, you know where to find me. It's Spence Swat everywhere except Snapchat because some bitch stole my username. So on Snapchat, it's Spence Moi. As you all may or may not know, new episodes of I'm Literally Screaming come out every single Thursday on all audio streaming platforms. But if you want to watch this happening live and in person and watch me and Hope dip our hands into a bowl, go to the Past Your Bedtime YouTube channel, subscribe, like, and comment who you want to see on here next. Also, if you're currently watching the YouTube video right now, do you like this blanket? Do you like this mug? Why don't you click that link down below and get yourself some merch we love you we want to see you repping this podcast we want to see you subscribe and if you don't subscribe that means you hate me and that's really sad because i love all of you and like we need to like show the love you know what i mean so make sure to subscribe like comment and yeah find this podcast on any streaming audio platform you wish i love you all very much and until next time Mwah. Bye, bye bye now another quick word from our sponsors over at ZocDoc. raise your hand if this sounds like you you spend hours scrolling through tiktok listening to diet and health advice from so-called experts you take all of the latest supplements that your mom's friend who teaches yoga swears by you follow your coworker's skincare routine religiously because their skin is glowing you listen to what all these people tell you but when was the last time you actually saw a real in-person certified doctor, like an actual health expert to run tests and check your symptoms. If you can't remember the answer, it's time to get help from a little app called ZocDoc. You can find thousands of top rated doctors on ZocDoc with just a few taps. They're all verified with patient reviews, so you can find a doctor who not only has years of experience and a medical degree, but also gets you and knows what you need. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of patient reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones that take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. Once you find the doctor you want, you can book them with just a few taps on your phone. No more waiting on hold forever with a receptionist. If you're like me and you want to do as little work as possible to see a good doctor when you're sick, you seriously need to try out ZocDoc. Go to ZocDoc.com screaming and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's C-O-C-D-O-C dot -C -C com slash screaming.